Hello everyone, and today I want to take you through some of the amazing things that you can do with Google Gemini, which is really becoming one of the top generative AI tools out there. And it's also producing some excellent results and sometimes even a lot better than ChatGPT. And the other thing it does is that it gives you some of the features that you only get with the paid version of ChatGPT. So in today's step-by-step -step tutorial, we're going to look at the best ways that you can use Google Gemini as a researcher, as a student, and some of the tips and the hacks that you can use with Google Gemini to really um, get the most out of it. So the first thing that you need to do is go to Google Gemini and you can search for it in Google or just uh, go to gemini.google.com. And once you've gone to that, it will ask you to sign in. Once you've signed in, you'll see that you're on the home page, which looks like this. And there's uh, several things that you can do. You can enter your prompt here. But before we start playing around with the prompts, uh, there's some important things that we need to do. So we need to go down here to where it says settings. I'm going to click on that. And where it says extensions, we'll also click on that. And you'll find that there are some um, features that are already toggled on, like Google Flights, Google Hotels, Maps. And what we're going to do is we're going to switch these off. And this is just helps us to be a bit more focused and efficient and not have them come up every time we enter something. But what we need to have on, which will be really useful as we'll see, is the Google Workspace. We'll click, make sure that's on, and it will ask us, do we want to connect to that and put connect? And make sure you have your YouTube on as well, because that will be helpful um, when we come to play around with videos. So we're going to go now back to the Gemini homepage. And now that I've toggled my workspace on, I'm going to add this prompt start with a prompt here that says at Google Drive. And you can see because I've enabled this extension that it starts to appear on my screen. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to say summarize articles on innovation and provide me with the key insights. I'm just going to enter that. And you can see what it's starting to do now. It's looking at my Google Works and it's looking at my Google Drive, my Google Docs, um, and it's looking, it's searching for any articles that I have on innovation. And here it's found several articles and it's provided me with the insights from the five articles that I have. So number one is the importance of innovation strategy and it's synthesized the articles across all five articles. It's a consistent theme is the importance of having a well-defined innovation strategy. And there's, and it goes on to um, tell us the types of innovation a firm should have, sometimes product, process, and so on. And then it gives me separate insights from each of the articles, which is really good to have as well. And then at the bottom here, it shows me the different articles that it's extracted them from, where they are in my Google Drive. And so really, really useful resources. It's done this with five articles that I have on innovation. Imagine if you have, you know, 10, 20 articles stored in your Google Drive. This will be such an important tool to uh, obtain insights and extract information. Okay, so the next prompt I'm going to add here is synthesize this information and provide me with three key arguments. And I'm going to enter that. And you can already see how this can help us with our research papers, our essays, that I can use these articles to extract important arguments that I can then support and, and elaborate on in my research paper. So here are three arguments that it's come back with. Strategic innovation drives success. Okay, simply having innovative ideas is not enough. Companies need a well-defined strategy. And then you can uh, add on to that, tailor your innovation strategy. So the importance of not having a one size fits all, and then looking at each unique characteristics. And then innovations in ecosystem. So developing ideas involves networks or partners, customers, and so on. And you can add more prompts to this and so on. Uh, I'm going to add a third prompt here to, just to show you the progression and how much we can extract from um, Google Gemini. I'm just going to say, based on the above, suggest three research ideas. Okay, so based on the articles and the information that's uh, synthesized, let's see what three ideas it can come back with. 
Okay, so now I've got three different research ideas. The first one, the impact of different innovation strategies on performance in, say, emerging markets. The second idea is developing a framework for tailoring innovation strategies to the company, age, and industry. And then it's used the idea of not having a one size fits all to come up with a successful innovation strategy, mapping and mitigating risk and in innovation ecosystems. And you can see you can carry on building on this to develop further ideas. So we could even add something here like, um, based on the above, identify three research gaps. And what you've, you can see that it's now gone to back, back to the Google workspace, back to the actual articles, it's analyzed them again. And then it's uh, come up with three different gaps that I could pursue. This part of the uh, process depends on the articles that you input into the Google Drive. So you can input as many as you can. And then Gemini will do is analyze and suggest information based on the articles that you provide. So the other thing we can do with Gemini is that we can get it to help us in our writing. And as always, we can use AI tools to help give us ideas and to kickstart the process, but never copy directly and always check your work. So I'm going to use a prompt here that says that write a detailed introduction discussing current innovation techniques that address the latest challenges and issues in the health sector. And I've given it some specific directions as well, like use of formal academic language, include a review of recent developments. Also, I've asked it to highlight how these innovations are transforming the field and discuss their implications for future research and practice. And I'll leave you this prompt below as well if you want to uh, write something similar. So I'm going to enter that. Okay, and you can see that it's come back with um, a title that says Re the revolution in healthcare, how innovation tackles modern medical challenges. And then we've introduction, the healthcare sector is undergoing a period of unprecedented transformation fueled by a surge in innovation techniques. Okay. Um, and it goes on to explain one of the most prominent innovations, the harnessing of artificial intelligence. And then it talks about the AI algorithms. Uh, and uh, then it goes on to different aspects aspects like the Internet of Things, the field of genomics, and so a lot of different ideas that I can then use and decide on how I want to go forward with this introduction. And if you'll notice the different colors that have been highlighted in our response, so you can see that there's parts of sentences that are green. And if we click on the arrows to expand here, it will tell us where it's actually generated this content from. And it gives us like a, a source for the information. Uh, so for example, this is from PubMed um, and it tells us that this has been fact checked and the same with here. So if I click on expand this section, then I get the, the source for this piece of information sometimes it highlights it in um or in orange color and here it's trying to tell us that it's fact checking the information and it didn't actually find a relevant source for this part of the information so consider researching further to just make sure that this statement is correct which is actually really good because it's it's kind of evaluating its own work and it's telling you i've got a source for this information this part i've actually written it but i'm not really sure where i've gotten it from so maybe you should check the sentence before deciding to use it you can also look at show drafts um and i've got two other different responses that I can use if I'm not happy with the first one, or I can take parts of the second or third drafts. So here I've got a different title, for example, redefining healthcare landscape of innovation. Um, and then I've got some of the uh, important trends as well, but written in a different way. So that would be useful to look into if you're not happy with the response that it's generated. And again, I can dub the uh, Google icon down here, double check response, and then it will go through the actual uh, response and give me again the sources if I expand on it and let me know if there's any sections that for example are not very accurate so if we look at draft three for example and double check my response and for example i've got here um, a section that uh, i need to consider where the information is coming from the thing that you can do once you've gotten your response is that if you come down here you'll see that there's an option to modify your response and if i click on that you can see that you can modify this response to be shorter longer simpler more casual more professional so say i wanted a bit more detail in my response I can select longer and, and what you'll see is that now it's come back with a lot more detail to the response it's much more extensive and then I can use that um, as again ideas to add to my introduction and there's so many things that you can do as well you can share and export and you can export it to docs or you can draft it in gmail or you can just share it externally wherever you want
Okay, so the other thing that I can do with Gemini, which is really amazing, is that I can extract any picture that I want. Like, say, for example, if I come to the article here and I take this um, image, I can copy the image. And then what I can do is I can actually upload this image into Gemini. And what I'm going to type here is analyze this image and explain the relationships and variables shown and provide me with three key insights. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter that. And you can see this is something that you won't be able to do with the free basic version of ChatGPT. But with Gemini, let's see what the output uh, produces. OK, and the first thing that you're going to see here is that it actually identifies where you've extracted that image from. So it says, I can analyze the image you sent me. The image is a scatter plot titled The Fog of Num Numbers by San Francisco Fed. And if I go back to the article where I took this image from, you'll see that it's actually from The Fog of Numbers. This is a, a publication by the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. And then it carries on to analyze the relationships in that chart. So it says it shows the relationship between the revision percentage points and the first release percentage points and then it goes on to describe the x-axis and the y-axis and it gives you it gives me some information about the slope and the data that's presented and then it provides me as I, I asked for the three key insights from the image so absolutely amazing if you want to um, quickly understand some relationships in a graph in a table um, and so on and I can also do the same with any other table or uh, chart that I extract from um, articles. So for example, if I come over here and um, I copy this entire table and again, paste that into Gemini and also add here, analyze this table and provide me, and then let's also specify and show me the key relationships and provide me with five, let's say, takeaways. Okay, I'm going to enter that. Okay, so you can see that it's come back with the results. It's analyzed the table for me. Um, it shows me the relationships between the various variables in my table and also provides me with five key takeaways from the table as I asked it to. And, and the insights are quite useful because then it gives me understanding of what this table is showing, for example, positive correlation between the income group and the GDP per capita, and then um, gives me some explanations of the income discrepancies that it's found in the table. And also just you know, um, this data is quite old, it's from 2014. So if you're using it for more up-to-date analysis, be sure to you know supplement it with newer economic data. And then it says, um, here's the focus on GDP per capita, for example, and then maybe it's just one way to measure perhaps look at other ways. So really um, quite useful insights that you can use. And this is not something that you'd be able to, again, do with the basic version of ChatGPT. Now, the, the other thing that I can do, which is really useful, is that say that I wanted to play around with this table, which is in a PDF format, and I wanted to um, explore the data myself, I could say, give, give me this data in table format and be as accurate as possible. Okay, and I'm going to enter that. Okay, you can see that it's now come back with the table. It's now presented the uh, titles, uh, the countries, and now I've got the actual GDP per capita, the GDP in billions, and so on. And then what I can do once I've got the whole entire table is that I can then now export it to Google Sheets and then I will have my entire table in a spreadsheet that I can actually start playing around with immediately. If I open my sheets here just to show you, here you've got all the entire data that you can instantly use. So the next thing I want to show you is that you can actually Gemini to provide you with any summary to a web page or an article that you have the link to. So I'm going to write here a prompt which says, guide me with a summary and five key takeaways from this article. And I'm going to go ahead and copy the link to this article on innovation strategy from Harvard Business Review. And I'm going to just copy it into Gemini. So I'm going to add it in here and I'm going to enter that. And you can see it's come back with a very brief summary of the article. And Gemini usually does that. Their summaries are really quite brief. 
with the five key takeaways that I've specified. And then if you want more elaboration, you can just ask it to elaborate on one or two points and it will uh, do that for you. So the other thing we can summarize as well is YouTube videos, which is really useful if you want an idea of what this YouTube video is about. So I'm just going to go over to one of my videos in the channel, and I'm just going to copy the link of that video. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it into Gemini. I'm going to say, summarize this video. Okay, and I'm going to put in the link. And you can see now that it's searching YouTube and it's going to pull out the video and start with the summary. Okay. And it tells us that this video is about how to use ChatGPT for research and literature review. And then it provides five key tips for using ChatGPT. And then it gives you the five tips. And then it goes through a step-by-step -step prompting guide for using ChatGPT for research and literature review. And here are the steps again. And it provides the steps. And then it gives you the link um, actual video. So a very quick and easy summary of a video and you can again ask more questions like say for example what were the prompts that were asked in the video um and let's just actually do that here now and see if it comes back with the right uh prompts what were the prompts asked in the video and let's see if it's going to be able to do that Okay, and, and it's done such an amazing job because I, I've put this video together and I know that these were the prompts that were asked in the video and it's come back with identify the current trends, identify, explain common themes in your literature on your topic, what are the different perspectives of schools. So really good job of pulling out the information from a video. Uh, it can be a very useful tool to get it to not only transcribe some of the, uh, the video, but to give you key and takeaways instead of you having to go back and pull these together. Okay, so another thing you can do with Gemini um, is that you can actually get it to create images for you. Um, and I've been using this quite a bit for my presentations. And if I'm working on um, a presentation, for example, on innovation techniques, I can say create an image, let's say for innovation techniques. Okay, and this you can just literally add any topic that you want. Okay, and you see, you can see that it's come back with a very nice image that I can just download, full size image, and then I can just add it into my presentation. You can use this one if you want, or if you don't really like these images, what you can do is you can just generate more images. But this is a really easy and quick way to find useful images that you can just insert into various areas in your research papers, your presentations. So the next thing I want to show you that you can do with Google Gemini is that you can actually search for files that you have already written and then extract key information from them. So let's say that you're using, for example, Google Docs to keep your notes on a specific topic. Then what you can do is you can go at, and then you can specify Google Docs. And then you can say, find me a file on innovation, uh, let's say measurement. Okay, and I'm going to enter that. And again, what you can see is that it's now searching my Google workspace and it's come back with several files that are related to innovation measurement. And here's the Google doc file that I'm looking for. So if I click on that, I can see that it's now it's saved in my drive. It's the file that I've wanted. And now what I can do is say, can you provide me with a summary of the innovation? measurement, I will say management measurement file. Okay, and I'm going to enter that. Okay, and now it's analyzing that Google Docs file that I've already had with my notes in it. And it's given me a nice short summary here that I can just quickly use to recap my memory on the uh, document. And if I wanted to uh, also specify here, rewrite it in bullet points. Okay, so I've got an even simpler way of looking at my file, quickly remembering and remembering the topics that are in this file. So I hope you found this video useful and I hope to see you in the next video.